The double police killings in Manhattan have led authorities there to make immediate changes. Every response to every radio call will be made with two cars, no matter the opinion of the patrol supervisor. And the edict now is to make no arrests unless absolutely necessary. And as always, therein lies legal ramifications and a consideration as to cops now perhaps pulling their punches, so to speak. For this and much more on the legal side of the docket, let's welcome back our expert in all things from the law, from the law offices of O'Brien and Ryan LLP in Philadelphia, Heather Hansen joins us. Heather, pleasure to see you again. Great to see you, Ed. Heather, this becomes a little bit disconcerting when we saw this today, that arrests are not to be made unless absolutely necessary. And again, not being a lawyer, just playing one on TV, I can see things happening cops not making arrests, the end result of something happening to someone, citizens being injured, lawsuits again. It just seems as if this is opening up a Pandora's box that no one is going to be able to close. Well, you know what, Ed? Ultimately, these police departments have to do a risk-benefit analysis. And when the risk is as high as it seems to be right now, the benefit of arresting people for those crimes which may be questionable is just not as great. You know, yes, they may face lawsuits in the future, but if you are losing police officers and you can't then pursue the dangerous crimes, you're facing something a lot worse. So they're just doing a risk-benefit analysis. They'll continue to do that as these, these things change and it's a dynamic situation. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, it seems as though they feel that this is what is necessary now to protect us and protect the officers. It gets a little scary, though, if you think about it, because we're talking about snap judgments here in the opinion of a cop. Something's happening on the street. That officer, she's got to make a decision right away and decide what she's going to do. If she believes that she's going to be targeted now or there's going to be lawsuits or the federal government even is going to come after her for some sort of potential civil rights violation, I can imagine cops basically, and, and I hate to say this, but pulling those punches a little bit and not taking every aim they normally would. Well, Ed, you know, it's this is something that is incumbent upon police officers every day to make these types of decisions. And I think we forget that in the normal day to day. And until something like this happens, does it come back to mind? They're making those decisions. They're weighing the risks, not only the risk of lawsuits and the risks of any sort of uh, supervisory trouble, but also the risks of their own death. And that's something that they have to do and have had to do for a very long time. We need to continue to support the police officers in making those decisions. Hopefully, we'll get to a place where we have the financial and the personnel resources to provide more support to them. But we also need to understand that this is something that they've been doing for a very long time and have trust that they'll continue to do it in an appropriate fashion. Heather, something that comes to mind here right now is the incitement of riots and the incitement of violence, if you will. Because we have people right now who are blaming the mayor of New York for not getting behind the police department. Al Sharpton certainly is a target right now, as are other quote-unquote civil rights leaders, if you will. Those who claim to be thinking in the best interests of the people involved. People are out saying, what do we want dead cops? And I'm going to try to be as sensitive as possible, but when you look at those families of the officers who were killed, it would seem as if, if we're looking at this strictly from a legal aspect, can you then consider some sort of legal action against those who you believe fostered the incitement, got them to riot, and might have led to the deaths of your loved one? It's very, very unusual for those types of cases to be pursued and if they are pursued to get anywhere. You've got to remember, ultimately, the First Amendment protects this type of language. It protects these type of gatherings. And it protects anything that is not meant to incite danger or incite some sort of risk immediately. So people like Al Sharpton and various protest leaders, it is very unlikely that any sort of a lawsuit against them would be successful. What you're looking for if you're trying to pursue some type of lawsuit like that is some sort of immediate threat where someone says go get him or something to that effect where it is immediate and there is a cause and effect when it is more general when it is more to raise awareness when it is more to raise protest we have a very strong first amendment protection here in this country that is meant to protect exactly that kind of speech all right a couple of minutes that we have left here let's go ahead and spin to a few other legal issues here and again unfortunately we have to turn to violence and this one comes in the case of the slender man killing the two young ladies there who are actually three young ladies there 12 years old at the time no i'm going to correct myself again two girls accused one victim so the two accused 12 years old at the time repeatedly stabbing this young girl, this other girl, apparently a friend of theirs or what, now they are eligible to stand trial. Was that a proper call in your opinion? 
It most likely was. There's a difference between competent to stand trial, which is what these young ladies have been found, and insanity defense, which is probably what is going to be raised at their trial. Competency to stand trial involves whether or not they understand the charges against them, whether or not they can cooperate with their lawyers. That is a very different standard than the insanity standard in Wisconsin. So it is likely the right decision. It's interesting, Ed, because not only have they been found competent to stand trial, but they're also going to be tried as adults. So thus far, far, the defense has not gotten any breaks in this case. We'll see what happens as the actual trial comes up. And an insanity plea will be very difficult under Wisconsin law, correct? That's right. They have the burden of proof. They have to prove that there was actual mental defect. It will come down to a battle of the experts between psychiatrists and psychology experts on both sides trying to get the jury to agree with their point of view. Nebraska is suing the state of Colorado. Apparently, Oklahoma is also going to get involved over pot. They're worried about the weed crossing state lines and getting involved in their governments and creating more of a crime rate there. You don't see this really going very far, do you? I, I think that it's opening up a huge can of worms. It, it may go far, but if it does, then you're looking at ramifications for the legalization of medical marijuana as well. The real problem here is that we still have a federal law that makes marijuana illegal and schedule, classes it as a Schedule One drug. So that puts us in a place where just simply saying we are not going to pursue cases against people who use those drugs in those states may not be enough. The, the, the surrounding states, Nebraska and Oklahoma, they have a real beef here because where it's legal in Colorado, the people who are using it are then coming into their states and doing things that are not legal. So it is understandable that they want to pursue this and it's understandable that they use the legal process to do that. I'm just not sure how it's all going to work out with regards to all of the other states that have laws with medical marijuana involved. All right, and 15 seconds, I know it's short, but an orangutan held in an Argentine zoo can be freed and transferred to a sanctuary after a court recognized the ape as a non-human person. You don't see this really making much of a dent in American law, though, do you? Well, I don't think that that will ever happen or any time in the near future in American law, but you do see similar cases here in America. We saw earlier this summer a question of whether or not a monkey who had taken a selfie had copyright to that picture. We saw a similar case to the Argentinian case about a month ago that was thrown out of court. And right now there's a case about whether or not a dog can be euthanized simply because an owner said that that's what she wanted in her will. So we are seeing more and more cases where the thought of animals as property is being questioned. There I don't think it will go as far as the Argentinian case. We'll continue to watch it as well. Heather, thank you so much again for your time. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to you too, Ed. Take care. Midpoint's back.